go. I'm never going to have a better call than this. Hello. Oh, my gosh. I got You're back. Back. You cannot be a push. Nobody is going to respect me. we got to get going on that. Be comfortable when you're yeah. six. That's great. You're also stunting your life. I don't know if that was helpful. This is Work Like a Girl. I'm Erica Nardini. This is our call-in show where we dispense all sorts of advice to women and all sorts of people who want to get ahead in their career. Hi, you're on with Erica and Cindy. Hi. Oh my gosh. Hi, ladies. I'm so excited to talk to you both this morning. Um, but so my question is kind of about working with like a third party, uh, like marketing agency. That's currently where I work. Um, so I'd love to know what you guys look for in sort of the relationship or kind of the results that you get when working with third party agencies. Um, and really also when you're sitting in like a results or a value presentation, what are some things that you either hate to hear when hearing from like a marketing agency or what are some things that like, wow, these guys are great. I'm so happy that I'm paying them to do this work for us. I'd love to hear kind of your experience and any advice you have um, when those kind of third party agencies are talking to CEOs. Ooh, the more nuanced your research, the more I love you. The more I know you really did your homework, you really care about this project. Because look, I understand your side of the business and, you know, slapping like the different logo on the same process and, you know, the slide deck. I think clients are mm. very aware of that. You have to, like, in order to be in a services business, you have to do that, right? You've got to have some uniformity uh, and apply it to a, a variety of different clients. So if you come in and dazzle me with some specific piece of research you've done in the company, I think you actually give a shit. Totally agree. I, I think the, so the biggest thing I always keep in mind, and I, I grew up in the agency business, um, is that whoever is paying you, there is someone in that group that doesn't want to be paying you. Like there's, <laughs> there's an undercurrent yeah. of like, why are we yeah. paying them? We're, you know what I mean? There's, exactly. It could yeah. be the finance guy or the finance girl, or it's the boss, yeah. but like somebody is like, what do these people do for us again? Um, and I agree with yeah. Cindy, like, don't go in with the statement of the obvious. Yes. Like the statement of the obvious drives me nuts. I think the second thing is you have to listen really well and to understand what the company needs and then to stay really focused mm -hmm. on delivering that for them mm -hmm. and making whoever it is you work with on the other side, making that person the hero, like make that person successful ultimately you could get a job working at the company or you could take that person's yeah. job, but like you've got to be really invaluable to one person and you have to listen, not just to what they're saying, but also what they're not saying so that you deliver it for them. Great. Yeah. Like, you know, your work makes their job easier and also kind of helps them be that advocate for, you Correct. know, for your agency within the organization. Correct. Yep. That's right. Yeah. I think a lot of times when people are at third party agencies, they think the schmooze is going to do it. I yeah. hate the schmooze. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to go to drinks with you. I definitely don't want to go to dinner with you. Like the thought just makes my <laughs> eyes roll back in my head. I just want you to do work that I can use. So I think keep mm -hmm. that in mind too. Like if you're, if you deliver great work, your, your agency will likely get more business from yeah. that company. And I think your point on, you know, in any sales, anything that you're doing that's selling, you got to make the person on the receiving end of that of that sell the hero of the story. Totally. So who is that person in the room you're going to make the hero of this story because you're going to deliver big? Yep, I totally agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, have Thank a great you. day. Good luck. Thanks, you too. Hey, Erica. What's up? It's Erica and Cindy today. Hi, Nick. Got my wonder hey, duo. I, I appreciate you guys take, taking my call. It's really, really, really great to talk to you. Great. What do you got? Um, a couple months ago, I left my, my old job that was crazy hours, bad work-life balance, and I found a new one, and pay is great, title is great, and everyone is incredibly nice. Great boss, great coworkers, but my workload is incredibly light, and every time that I like bring it up to people, it's been probably three months I've been here, I, I get work for like a day or two, and then it kind of dies down again. Mm. So my, my question to you is, you know, do I... Do I kind of ride this wave of, you know, great company, great benefits, great pay, great title, but not learning a ton and not um, having the workload that is fulfilling? Or do I parlay this and try and, you know, move, find a new job? Ooh, great question. This is an interesting question. It's like when you're the outlier because you want more work. Um, how is that culturally not fit? Like, do you have this conversation with your peers and they're like, shh, don't ruin a good thing? <laughs> 
I'm okay. curious. Yeah, yeah. So my my direct coworker, um, her and I have talked about this sometimes, and she's kind of she's been there a couple of years, and she's had this kind of in waves. Mm-hmm. And I think you know her advice was always just like you know uh, find the people that treat you really well and ask them you know where you can help and where you can be of value. And I've tried to do that, and it's just like it's it's far and few between. And I think so much of what I've done the past few months is like automate so many things that people before me were doing that took a lot of their time. Yeah. So now I feel like all the reporting that I that I do that should be taking some time, I've made easy, which is great for me, but not great for my, I guess, my workload time. I think you go. Nick, I'm going to tell you, I would be bored out of my damn Same. mind. And I think life, you spend so much of your time at work, you better be learning some new things. Totally. Like we, you know, we, the yeah. day we stop learning, we die, right? It, we really do. I mean, it's so, so the boredom factor. And if you've continued to raise your hand and they not really like, oh, great, you know, 24 hours, here's something you can do for me tomorrow. And they don't have a longer term plan. I'm going to be honest with you. I also would worry about the viability of the company sure. long term. I would, because if they actually don't see you raising your hand saying, give me more to do, and they can't come up with it, this is like not the highest performing organization. And you sound like you should be in a high performing organization. I totally agree with Cindy. I I think, Nick, that, you know, one thing is that you want, it's so great that you got out of a toxic place where you didn't have work-life balance. I'm sure the new job was was rewarding and and nice for a while. You yeah. could leave at five o'clock, and mm-hmm. you know you don't you don't you're not stressed when you go home. I remember making a job change like that, and then I was like, oh shit, now what do I do? Because yes. I'm bored. I think when you're bored, you get really destructive. Mm-hmm. Um, and it sounds like yeah. how you know how old are you? Can I ask? Uh, I turned I turned thirty last week. Yeah, like you're in like the prime. Get shit done. Learn as much as you can. Grow your career. End of the day, like this job may be cushy and great and you get paid and the benefits are awesome, but it's not setting you up for your job tomorrow. And it doesn't sound like any, I agree with Cindy, like I'd be worried about this company overall, but it it's the longer you spend there, the less you're going to know almost. Yeah. We well, got to play the long game. Yeah. You're, you're thinking about like not today and what's easy, but longer term, where do you want to get to in your career? What do you want to top out at earning? And I just think cush, you know, the easier is never the right answer for totally agree. best outcome for yourself. Totally agree. So like get a great vacation in, take your time, find the right next job. And then I think the other thing is ask a lot of questions about culture in the next job. Sounds like you have, it's like your Goldilocks, your Goldie Nick, where you had too much and now you got too little and you need to find the just right. Yeah. Honestly, one of the best yeah, no. things to do when you're interviewing is observe the pace mm. in that when you walk through the door mm. what is the pace how quickly are people moving around how quickly are they talking like i really do think That's i had um call. an interview which this observation came to me from somebody who came in years ago to interview to be one of my salespeople, and he said what got me going is i walked through the door and it was like organized chaos yeah. everyone was hyped up everyone was running it's exactly what barstool feels like right mm-hmm. and um and i i nicknamed him I called him Picante for years because it was like pace right and uh but I really think that's a good at least that's yeah. my tip Nick on when you walk into the you know the job interviews just look at the pace yeah totally agree yeah for sure and the other factor is like I'm I'm full remote in my new job I moved oh. to Boston about a month ago so it, it doesn't doesn't really help that I'm full remote and I'm not seeing people face to face um so, and and I, I just don't know if I'm a if I'm a remote worker. I'm not, I don't know if I really thrive in that environment. Some people do, and that's great for them. I just don't know if I'm that person. And I think, um, you know, I, I should if next next job has to be something in person where yeah. the pace definitely matters, and 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 being in a place where I the workload is there, but also it's like a a, a conducive place where people seem to be enjoying the pace and flow of things. Yeah, I agree. I think I had a remote when I worked for Microsoft, I was remote and this was in the early 2000s and it made me actually feel very insecure and very mm-hmm. isolated. I hated it. And it also made me work 10 times the amount I needed to work because I felt like I had to overcompensate. Yeah. And I think remote cultures sure. can often be are really appealing for people who don't want to work that hard. I hate to say it, but it's true. Like coasters. Yeah, coaster. So, yeah. Uh, Nick, like, go. For, you you seem great. Like, go. There'll be a ton of companies who would love to have someone like you. Okay. I, I appreciate it, Sam. It's very very nice of you. Okay, great. 
Let's go. I'm never gonna have a better call than this. Hello. Oh my gosh, I got you're big. You cannot be a push. Nobody is gonna respect you. We gotta get going on that. Be comfortable when you're yeah. six. That's creep. You're also stunting your life. I don't know if that was helpful.